No mai, hoki mai. Uh, welcome, ministers, colleagues, uh, to the 2021 APEC ministerial meeting. Uh, wherever you are, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, kia ora. I'm delighted to see you all here today as we gather together for this, the final ministerial meeting of New Zealand's APEC host year. Uh, when we met at this time last year, I think we had all hoped that the pandemic and the challenges it brought with it would be a distant memory by now. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Colleagues, this is our last meeting for the year, and by the time we have finished our discussions, I hope we will have achieved five things. First, I want us to build on the work that we have done so far on the immediate response to COVID-19. We have made considerable progress on vaccines, supply chains, and essential goods and services. But we must continue our work, and we must strive for a stronger, more resilient region. This is only achievable if we maintain our momentum. Second, we must send a powerful message to the region and to the world ahead of the 12th WTO Ministerial Conference. APEC has a long tradition of support for the WTO and the multilateral trading system. We are facing the biggest economic shock in 75 years. We know that trade will be a strong driver in our recovery. We absolutely cannot afford to turn our attention away from an institution that has underpinned APEC's work since its inception. Third, and relatedly, we must reaffirm the importance we place on openness on regional economic integration. Now is not the time to turn inward or away from each other. Now is the time to become more open, more interconnected, more and to focus more on cooperation as we move through this crisis together. Fourth, I want us to focus on sustainability. COVID-19 is a serious challenge, certainly. However, this does not mean we can focus on only one issue at a time. With our colleagues about to begin their discussions at the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference, APEC must send a clear message that it recognises climate change and decarbonisation as increasingly urgent issues. If we want to leave a safe, sustainable and prosperous region for our future generations, we must work to safeguard what we have now. This will be our legacy. Finally, inclusion. I think I speak for all of us when I say we do not want only some parts of our region to recover from this pandemic, nor only some of our people. Our recovery must leave no one behind, but this does not happen by accident. We must make a conscious effort to create and maintain a truly inclusive economic recovery. So colleagues, uh, this is what our meeting is about. Um, how we can use trade and economic and technical cooperation as tools to accelerate our economic recovery. There is no better way for us to identify opportunities and meet challenges than to engage directly with one another.